And so I became a waiter on the floor under the guidance of the head waiter, Mr. Scrivenek. And there were two other waiters, but I was the only one allowed to lean against the table in the alcove when things slowed down in the early afternoon. The head waiter told me that I'd make a good head waiter, but that I had to train myself to fix a guest in my memory as soon as he came in and be aware when he was leaving. Not necessarily at lunchtime, when a customer would have to pick up his coat in the cloakroom, but in the afternoon, when meals were served in the cafe and the cloakroom was closed, so that I would learn to spot those who wanted to sneak out without paying. I was also supposed to be able to estimate how much money a guest had with him and whether he would spend accordingly or should spend accordingly. That, Mr. Scrivenet would said, was what being a good head waiter meant. And so, when there was a time for it, he would quietly describe to me what sort of guest had just arrived or was just leaving. He trained me for several weeks until I felt ready to try it on my own. I would look forward to the afternoon as though I were setting out on some adventure and I'd be as excited as a hunter waiting for his quarry to appear. The head waiter would either smoke, his eyes half closed, and nod contentedly, or he would shake his head, correct me, and then go to the guest himself and show me that he'd been right, as he always was. And that was how I first found it out, because when I asked the head waiter a basic question, how do you know all this? He answered, pulling himself up to his full height, because I served the King of England. The King, I said, clapping my hands. You mean you actually served the King of England? And the head waiter nodded his head in satisfaction. And so the second phase of my training began. It was exciting, something like the lottery, when you're waiting to see if your number will come up or hoping to win the door prize at a masquerade ball or some public celebration. A guest would come into the restaurant in the afternoon. The head waiter would nod. We'd go into the alcove and I'd say, Italian. The head waiter would shake his head and say, Yugoslav, <laughs> from, from Split or Dubrovnik. And we'd look each other in the eye for a moment, then nod, and each put 20 crowns on a tray in the alcove. I would go to ask what the guest wanted, and when I'd taken his order and was on my way back, the head waiter would see my expression, sweep up both 20 crown notes, and slip them into his enormous wallet, <laughs> for which he'd had one of the pockets in his trousers bordered with the same kind of leather. And I'd be astonished and ask, how did you know that? And he'd ask, answer modestly, I serve the King of England. <laughs> and so we'd bet like that, and I'd always lose. But then he said that if I wanted to be a good head waiter, I had to be able to recognize not just the nationality, but also what the guest was likely to order as well. <coughs> so when a guest came into the restaurant, we'd nod, go into the alcove, and lay our twenties on the sideboard, and I'd say, goulash soup, or the tripe soup special. <laughs> the head waiter would say, tea and fried toast, <laughs> no garlic. <laughs> then I'd go for the order and say, good morning, and what would you like? And the guest would say, tea and fried toast, no garlic. <laughs> and as I walked back, the head waiter was already scooping up both twenties. <laughs> and he'd say, you have to learn to recognize a gallbladder case when you see one. <laughs> Just take a look at him. His liver is probably doomed as well. <laughs> Another time, I thought the guest would have tea with bread and butter. And the head waiter said, Prague ham with a pickle and a glass of pills and a beer. <laughs> and of course, he was right. And when I'd taken the order and was coming back with it, the head waiter saw me coming, raised the little window, and called the order into the kitchen for me. <laughs> One Prague ham. And when I got there, he added, and a pickle on the side. <laughs> I was glad to be learning, even though I wasted all my tips, because we bet whenever we could, and I'd always lose. And each time I asked him how he knew, he'd slip the twenties into his big wallet and say, I serve the King of England. <laughs>